Oh, well, I mean, it was, I mean, I remember when, when I got my driver's license when I was 16, and the first record I put in was August and Everything After, Counting Crows. And then, uh, I think when I was in middle school, see, I didn't really totally get into the grunge thing. It was just a little bit too much for me. So the whole post-grunge, kind of mid-90s alternative rock, you know, bands like Smashing Pumpkins and Bush uh, and Oasis, um, and then that kind of morphed into, you know, like uh, finding bands that were kind of, uh, you know, modern day uh, versions of, of great acts from the 60s and 70s, like the Counting Crows, Wallflowers, you know, bands like that, I immediately gravitated towards the Gin Blossoms. And the crazy thing is, is now all these people are kind of like my buddies and songwriting partners. And so it's just, it's just been a, an amazing journey. Well, I mean, I, I think, you know, I made Drive in a way that was, that was, I mean, I wrote 12 songs for that album, and then 12 songs, went, or 11 songs for the record, and 11 songs ended up on the album, you know. I think um, it was definitely one of the most pure albums I've ever written, because I didn't know any better, you know. It was just kind of like, oh, here are my tunes that I've been living with since I was 16 and 17, and... Uh, that's all I got, you know, but as you learn and you grow and going on tour with these bands that I just look up to so much, I mean, I just absorbed all this stuff from all these bands, you know, and I definitely wore those influences on my sleeve. So I think that as, I mean, in a way, I, I kind of said this before, in a way I feel like uh, I wish I could go back to, you know, an album like Drive because I, I, it was just so honest and pure and I didn't know anything else before I made that album. But also, I've, I think I've learned a lot along the way. Mines is basically my in-between album process kind of uh, just sort of way that I can I can test and show people that, that the 12 or 13 songs that end up on a record um, are usually supported by a lot of songs that you'll never hear. And basically any song that I feel uh, helps their album making process, I'm putting it a online on my website available for fans and I just felt like you know um, I just felt like the term sides was kind of a way for me to basically show people that you know I can do a song that sounds like this I can do a song that sounds like that and it's all honest but they could sound nothing like each other and then maybe the new album falls right in between that um, I wrote that with Emerson Hart from Tonic and another huge influence of mine um, and we, I was in Nashville, and I think I was playing a show that night, and I called him, and um, I, I had the verse of that, and it was definitely one of those that I didn't really know what it was about until he kind of came in and we kind of just manipulated it and molded the song. Um, but I definitely, when I was playing it, uh, before I had the idea, I just was like, I have to show this idea to Emerson, you know, because he's, it just sounded like a tonic song. It sounded like a... Emerson Hart kind of verse, and then when he kind of took it over the top, I just was pretty happy with the way it turned out. There's a reason for that. As much as I would love to have every song that I've ever done available on iTunes, you know, iTunes is kind of like the, the you know, the holy ground for, for you know, it's, it's taken the place of, of the majority of record stores. So if you're gonna do something and you're gonna put it on iTunes, it's kind of like a big neon sign that says, this is where, this is it, this is my, you know. Um, and I know you see a lot of artists that just kind of throw everything they've ever done, but I have so many songs that I want my fans to hear. Again, some of which sound nothing like what the other ones sound like. Uh, I, I, I want to save iTunes and that place to where it's more of for the record. Hey, this is Graham Colton, and you're watching Collision Radio.